and welcome to the Geek Inside Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Hyde. And that sample you just heard is uh, from the LP. Um, from uh, always, every time I go live, I always get uh, I always get tongue tied. The unholy allied from the debut album called Godthorn. And with me is Jono from the band Godthorn. Hey, hey man, how's it going? Uh, how's it going? Oh, not bad. Uh, got this like nasty issue with a f- filling in one of my molars. It's driving me bonkers. But other than that, doing all right, man. Doing all right. Nice, nice. Well, we have to say we go back. Oh. What? <laughs> you said like twenty years. I think, yeah, okay? that, yeah, yeah. Jeez. Oh, man. Time. The first, uh, my first foray into the city of Kingston when I was a kid, man, grew up in Silly's Bay. My first job in town was with you. Yep. And uh, <laughs> some of the best times of my life, man. <laughs> we had fun. That's oh, for sure. We did, man. Learned a lot from you, too. <laughs> it's a long time ago now. Jeez, a lot happens in 20 years. Oh, no kidding, man. Like kids, kids growing up. Yeah, yeah, and we were just talking offline, and my my youngest is married now. She's twenty, married, living in the states with her husband, who's a military. Crazy, yeah, man, it's Where's wild. Your year oldest now is? Did you say nine? She'll be nine in December, and then my little guy, he's he just turned seven in July, and oh, they're just they're my life, man. They they're just the reason I do everything. Yeah. Before you know it, you'll be getting married and moving off. Time flies. <laughs> oh, man, does it ever. Does it ever. So, we are going to chat music, and we're going to talk about uh, your band and uh, your YouTube channel and anything else that, that pops up that we want to talk about. That's awesome, man. I have spent- <laughs> You know, even just like our kind of random sort of chats back and forth on Facebook, I've uh, I've been looking forward to actually like sitting down and just chatting music with you. Yeah. Because like back, I mean, back in HMV, man, you taught me to like listen to music differently. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, we, we'd put something on and you'd be like, John, like, listen, listen to this guitar part or like listen to the way this was put together. And like, and man, that stuck with me that like that has seriously stuck with me and like the way i i hear a song and how it's put together like i credit you to for a lot of that so thank you yeah you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> i only pass on what i've learned from my uh my um what do you call them the people that i i learned my music so. yeah it's it's cool and like and i'm able to like you know teach that to you know my kids and you know in terms of you know putting albums together and different tones that you want to hear like that's stuff that i really pay a lot more attention to now mm-hmm. music is made to to play to listen but it's also made to make you it, it takes you on a journey yes yes right? oh just, man you know, in the last journey I just went on was the latest album by um, Steve Hackett. Yeah, yeah, that album is friggin' amazing. I'll have to. I'll definitely. Yeah, you'll have to send me the link to that. I'll check yeah, out I'll there. Think, yeah, it's um, well, it's old Genesis, right? So yeah, that's awesome. Uh, for me, one that really did that to me lately is the latest Times of Grace album. Right, their first one came out like ten years ago, and I mean. It's, to me, I would still say it's probably my favorite album to date. It was kind of like an offshoot from the band Kill Switch and Gage, but right. then, but ten years later, this year they just brought out their, you know, I guess their sophomore, and it's man, it, it like emotionally, like it took me on a freaking roller coaster, and like I, you know, I'm on the road driving at night for work, so I'm able to listen to just. And mm-hmm. anything new that pops into my head, you know, I can listen, just listen to it. And man, what a journey! Yeah, what a freaking journey! And that's like, and I appreciate that. You know, a good album that's put together that takes you up, takes you down, makes you like, makes you sad. Like not sad, but no, emotional. Like it's like, you, there's nothing like it. 
back in um, the early 80s, there was an interview that I saw with Jeff Lynn from ELO. Oh, yeah. And, um, he was always very a recluse with his interviews and stuff like this. But one, someone, I can't remember what um, magazine or whatever, it finally got him to, to talk about something. And he said something one time that really stuck with me. He goes, you can buy the album. They would, don't just buy the album, listen to the album. And it's yeah. like, you appreciate what you're listening to because, you know, it's amazing how, like you play what, bass, right? Uh, and Godthorn <laughs> bass and then in the bass, yeah. brothel guitar. Yeah. It's amazing how instruments can produce such amazing sounds. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's it's mind blowing. Yeah. It's, it's such a unique I guess, well, I mean, hobby to, to undertake or profession for some or whatever, but there's mm -hmm. just so much you can do with it. And there's so many little intricacies of each individual song. And, you know, there's little, little things. I mean, you, you, you know this because you, you taught me this, but like the little, you know, I wouldn't call them little hidden gems of the songs, but there's, you know, these little parts that are purposefully put, you know, here and there just to, kind of intrigue the listener a little bit without slapping you in the face with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like being yep. able to tell a story within a story. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that's missing in today's music. I man, I, well, I agree completely. I, I agree completely. I mean, I listen to some of the new stuff that comes out today and I'm like, Number one, you really got a record contract. And number two, you're really selling millions of copies. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And, and so many of the, like, it's so much of it, I mean, I hate to say it all, a lot of it sounds identical. But when you listen to how the vocals are modified, mm -hmm. when you listen to just the sounds of the guitars, the sounds of the drums, even the style of the vocals, like so many of these artists nowadays sound it's kind of, to me it's kind of going on the way of the way country music is yeah oh definitely like you can play me five different country music songs and i'll think they're all by the same artist and they could be by five different people mm -hmm. i i miss yeah i miss the good you know the good old rock bands that that were unique that stood out mm -hmm. yep yeah it's and my wife's a big country fan and Yes, I married her anyways. And, <laughs> and when we're driving in the car, that's all we bloody well listen to is country all the time. And it's the same thing over and over again. Right. It's, they, they have to play a certain song on repeat over and over, every hour, on the hour, or something like that. It's, and it's not just the music industry that, that's hurting. It's I find radio stations, there's just they're so dull anymore. Yeah. It's they're too corporate. Like if you, I mean, all we have in Kingston are what bell and Rogers radio stations, basically. Yeah. And, yeah. The, the, and the, the problem there is like the playlist that we hear in Kingston, they're going to hear three hours away. Yeah. yeah and, exactly. and you're right. It's the, basically the same playlist of 10 or 12 songs. And the problem when it's all corporate is like the independent guys, like they don't get a chance to squeak in there. Mm -hmm. like the corporate radio stations don't give a crap about us you know what i mean like there's yep. and then you have there's some local radio stations but that's I, what i miss about um working that hmv or sam the record man because when you're in there you you had to play some of the chart stopping stuff or chart oh yeah stopping stuff but you can also play other stuff to to so people can go in and have something to broaden their minds a little bit, yeah. you know, and we need music stores like that more now than ever, but sadly they're going the way of the dodo bird. Yeah. It's unfortunate, man. The, the internet's just, Oh yeah. The internet's just killed everything. It's everything, man. Everything. Oh, it's the worst in the MP3s and everything else. Yeah. I still listen to LPs, man, or records. I was just at, um, I just picked up 10 records at a yard sale and um, I paid like five bucks for them. And when I got home, I priced them out online to see how much they were. They yeah. were and uh, they were almost almost 300 bucks. Holy I paid, I paid crap, 50 man. for these things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. 
Yeah, because when I saw them online, when uh, the store um, posted them, I was like, yeah, I'll take every one of them. And they're like, oh, cool, cool. And meanwhile, I'm like, yeah, I'm not telling you how much they're worth. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, man, I miss that. And it's like back in the days at HMV when we had like import albums come in or like, you know, there was, you know, limited prints and stuff. Like, I miss that. Like, I, I hate yeah. that it's just everything's just one click or one, you know, thumb press yeah. away. And the sound quality isn't the same neither when you listen to it because it's all compressed, right? Yeah, it's not. So. Yeah, you're 100%. Music, man, needs to come back. Uh, yeah, that's why, like, I'm just old school. Give me my guitar and an amplifier, and, like, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, and my, see, my wife is, like, she doesn't like chords, so I just recently bought her a laptop for her side business. Oh, right on. And I got her a, um, her laptop's beside me here. That's what I'm pointing at. And you can't see it, but that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I got her a cordless, um, a cordless um, mouse and everything else, right? But if you saw my desk, I've got cords all over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, my I, desk like it's such a mess, and I'm like, it's it's perfection the way it is, man. Cords, yeah, cords go all over the place. I'm old school. Hell yeah. And unfortunately, when I get my new car, I'm probably going to lose my my tape deck and everything else because they don't sell them anymore right cars with tape decks <laughs> no i don't think so oh but i'll be going the way of the mp3 player <laughs> or blue blu-ray is that no bluetooth bluetooth that's yeah. yeah just more wire just more technology to get messed up yeah and more technology to break i drive an old car man i got crank windows and everything that's that's yeah. the way to go less stuff to go wrong yep so Godthorn, it's um oh yes. Now, were you called something else before? Uh, as, not as far as I know. Uh, I was not just brought into the band last last year, last mm -hmm. last year, last year, and uh, yeah, things kind of things just got rolling. Um, we finished up the album maybe a month or two ago. Uh, I went in, I had a, two, two hour long sessions and slammed all my parts on there. And it's, it's awesome. Like these, these guys are just the best group of dudes to freaking play music with. Like we have a blast. We're yeah, shooting, cool. shoot, shooting the breeze at all hours of the day and night. Like, right. And to me, that's, you know, it's, it's just I, ideal. Like it's, you don't want it to feel like a job, right? Like you want it to kind of feel like a family. Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to share the screen here, and I'm going to uh, share screen right here. And this is your album cover. <laughs> that was uh, we took that backstage at Mavericks in Ottawa. Oh yeah, uh, we played there on the third. It's I mean. Yes. I I it, I I guess it would make a pretty good one. I I don't know. I'm pretty sure. I think they've already got that stuff all sorted. Oh, okay. Just, all right. Oh, I thought this was the album cover because this no. is okay. No, that's what I just uh just did some kind of just to just to send the guys and it's just a mm -hmm. it's I love the shot and I don't know what who's that, uh, who's, who's this guy right here? So that so. is Andy. He's uh, he's our lead player. Phenomenal okay. dude. One of the funniest dudes you'll ever meet in your life. Uh, and, and that boy, he can shred. Oh, right. Like, he's unreal. And then this, this guy here? That is my boy, Doug. Him and I go, we, we go back a lot of years, too. Uh, we're in the Day Street. We were in the Day Street brothel together, you know, 10, 10 plus years ago. Right. Um, and then, you know, we lost touch for a little while and then got back in touch. And then uh, he brought me into Rise of Dissension, which uh, right. we're, we're yes. kind of we're just kind of sitting stagnant, I guess, with that one right now. But um, yeah, I remember hearing about that. one. Right. Yeah, they're uh, I'm not too I'm 
I, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm not too sure what's going on. I'm definitely not the guy. I wouldn't be the guy to ask about that, but Doug is like, the guy is like a brother to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, like he, you know, he got me hooked up with my job, which is the, like, uh, it's unreal what I've been able to do because of this. And, you know, him and I like musically, like that we just, him and I click. Yeah. And cool. like, just to throw an instrument at him, an instrument at me, and we'll sit down and like, we're good to go. And he's just, he is one, he's an awesome dude. And who's the Dave Gahan looking guy? Here? <laughs> that is Ryan. That's, uh, I actually just met Ryan for the first time. Like when we had our very first rehearsal, mm-hmm. um, and he's young, younger fellow. Awesome. Awesome drummer, man. Like, holy crap. Um, the guy just blows my mind with what he can do. Uh, and one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet is, you know, very awesome supportive family. Um, you know, they came out to our show, uh, in, in Ottawa at Mavericks, uh, which was mm-hmm. unbelievable. We had some friends, uh, Blaine, Shelley, Paul, Jess, Rachel, I got to give you guys a shout out because you know, it's not a short, it's not a short trek to get to Ottawa. <laughs> but the, sh- the show was unreal um the crowd was loud and awesome uh the other bands we played with were fantastic um we've actually one of the bands from the show uh they're coming to play our cd release show next month on the 23rd and they're going to be coming from montreal oh, nice <laughs> and uh, uh a band that's basically another band from the lead singer of the headliner of this Maverick show. Uh, they're coming as well. So it's like, we're going to have an awesome, awesome night on the 23rd. And yeah, this is just, yeah, this is, uh, I'm just looking at this picture, man. It's just one, uh, one awesome group of guys. Like, and this is you. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's me in the mask there. <laughs> what, what's the, um, what, what, what's what's well, up with the mask? What's... Well, I wanted to do I wanted to do something different. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to, obviously, I, I take inspiration from other bands that have have done the same. But I just I wanted to approach this band a little bit differently. But with the you know the the themes of the band with Godthorn, uh, I just I wanted to do something a little bit more on the three the theatrical side, like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. In my mind, when you're going to a concert, like you're going to a show, like you're not just, if you're just going to listen to, you know, the four, whatever, three, four plus people listen to music, like you can put on the record at home. If people are, if people are paying money to come and see you and taking the time out of their day to come and see you, like put on a friggin' show for them. Exactly. Give, yeah. give them something different. Give them something to talk about. Give them, you know, just do something. And for me, like, like I deal with the anxiety as well. And I'll tell you, man, like <laughs> as sweaty as it gets underneath that thing, mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of freeing. Like, right. Like people can see you, but they can't really see you. Mm-hmm. And there's something, I don't know. There's something about that. That's just, I've never experienced it before. And I mean that, that show at Mavericks, that was the first time live I've ever played bass. Oh, cool. I got a couple people saying hello. So I got a hypnotic rocket. Hello, hypnotic rocket. And then I got uh, a friend of my Doctor Who chat. He says, you can be like Elvis and fit an actual record player in your car. Hello, by the way. Now, how often, like, you could, today you couldn't fit an album or a record player in your car. It would be cool if you could. I wish you I'm could. I'm afraid you'd be skipping and everything else, right? <laughs> or it would be like, you know, instead of putting a CD player in, but you got a big wide enough to put an album in. Uh, I'm sorry, man. I'm trying to get my camera back on here. Oh, there we go. Perfect. All right. I'm sorry, man, about my technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, no worries. <laughs> It's all part of the experience. Uh, right. So who's the lead singer? That would be Doug. That's this gentleman here. That uh, that would be the it's, yes. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that, that, one, that one there. The little guy in the back. Peeking his head around the 
shoulder. Okay. Now he, when I listened to the first song that I listened to was one that I'm going to do a little sample of here in a second called Allied, um, Unholy, Unholy Allied. And one thing that really stood out for me, I'm going to remove this now, was it, it's very Alice and like Alice and Chain sounding. Yeah, and I love it. That's like, that's, I mean, that's my jam. <laughs> yeah, mine too. That's what the <laughs> first thing I thought in my holy, I'm, I'm getting like Lane Stanley vibes here. He's yeah. dog, dogs. Yeah, he's, he's unreal. So I'm going to play a little bit of this so everyone can hear. Just give me one second. Here we go. So yeah, when man. he drops his voice, that's when you can really hear the Lane Stanley um, influence in there, which which is really wicked. Yeah, he's uh, he's just he's he's on point, man. He's on point, and it's a great, like, crazy thing. Like when we played our show at the Mavericks, like neither one of us slept the night before because we worked. Right. So like we worked all night, up all day. Like we were, we had to be there for two o'clock for sound check, which didn't actually happen until like three thirty, four o'clock. Um, and then, he, and then he put on a, the hell of a performance, man. Like it's, and and he's in. I mean, he's also in a cover band called the Ice Gods um, that play around town here as well. And like, his range is unreal. Like whatever, whatever you throw at him, like. Mm -hmm. uh, we played a Black Rapids Crossroads show, and like, <laughs> I, I tackled Alanis Morissette, man. Oh, is that right? <laughs> like, it was it was awesome. It was it was awesome. The guy is one of the best friends I got. I haven't been to a live show, and I think the last live show I went and saw was when Blue Rodeo was here. Oh, Jesus, that was what five years ago. Four years ago now? Oh, man. October 23rd, man. Yeah, the Sadie's. Sadie's opened for them. So that was that's a while ago. And that was the 13th time I saw Blue Rodeo live. Crazy. <laughs> man, I'll tell you, the band I've seen most live is honestly Thornley. Oh, really? Wow. And I just, I don't know if you remember when Come Again came out. And I remember you putting it on at HMV. Yep. Yeah, and I was just like, "Holy shit!" Like these guys are unreal. And then they played the free show at the Feb Fest, mm -hmm. which was awesome. And then uh, after I left HMV and went to Future Shop, the Molson rep came into the store, and he used to come and buy iPods from me all the time, just to give away for like Queens parties and stuff. Right. And he had these like wristbands for uh, a show that Thornley put on at Stages. And I was like, hey, man, like, like I knew it was a Molson sponsored event. So he came into the store and I asked him, like, hey, are there, is there any chance you can, like, hook me up with one of the wristbands? He's like, yeah, man, no problem. So, like, made the sale or whatever, went out to his car and he opened the door and he pulls out this roll. Like, and I'm talking like vinyl record, like full size roll. He's like, how many do you want? <laughs> oh, nice, nice. <laughs> so I was like, well, man, like I got some friends, maybe, I don't know, nine, 10, whatever. I got some friends that'll want to go. So, and it, it was an awesome, awesome show. And I had Trevor Hurst of Econoline Crush open for him. Wow. I think it was just going by the name Hurst, but like played a bunch of Econoline Crush tunes, man. It was awesome. Like some of the best the best experiences of my life. Like my current partner and I, like we've that was kind of our life up until COVID hit. Like that was kind of our thing was going to shows, you know. Mm -hmm. Like over the course of a summer, we saw Corn and Allison Chains. We saw 
<sighs> Stone Sour and Ozzy, Slipknot, uh, Gojira, um, amazing metal band. Like, and one I'd recommend anybody if you get a chance to like just for the light show alone. We saw these guys play like mid afternoon, and the light show blew my mind. No, oh, sorry. That's, right. that's how good it was. It was awesome. Well, yeah, that was to me. There's nothing like a live show, whether like I'm attending one or playing in one. Just the atmosphere of it, like there is nothing like it. Yeah, I miss going to live shows. Oh. <laughs> the last really good one that I went to was Styx when they came here. <sighs> That was, that was that'd be like my my dream one of my dreams my other that and the eagles those are my two like oh yeah i mean i just want to see tommy shaw live like, yeah well Ty, he's, <laughs> he's amazing live in laurie lawrence gowan was doing the vocals for them oh yeah and he's amazing he's better too. yeah I, I grew up like my mom listened to gowan man like yeah. all the time good times yeah me too I remember what, uh, when one year Gowan played uh, the Festival of the Islands in Gananoque. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. I think, I don't know. What was the last big show we went to? Like the last one. Would it have been Slipknot? Yeah, it was definitely Slip. We actually went to... <laughs> There was a, a show at the at the amphitheater in Toronto. Uh, Breaking Benjamin was headlining. Uh, and Three Days Grace was like kind of like the semi main. And uh, I mean, no disrespect, <laughs> but like we had to leave halfway through that set. Oh, is that right? Yeah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Just I, I, I mean, I used to, when I was younger, I used to love Three Days Grace. But the vocalist they have now just I it just doesn't uh, yeah. He was hitting certain notes in a song, and I, I looked at my partner and I was like, uh, "How's that? How's that cider coming? Are you done that yet?" <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh man. The last concert I walked out on was Neil Young when he played here. No it way. Was, yeah. Oh, it was bad. Because he didn't start off with any of the classic stuff. He went straight into his new album. Oh, yeah. And, we, and every, people were like looking at each other going, what the heck is this stuff? You know, and it just, you know, and that just killed the atmosphere. The mood just went shoo, deflated the atmosphere. Oh, he man, ended up coming back and did a better job, apparently. But I didn't go when he came back. But it was, it was bad. And my uh, wife yeah. and each other, we were like, nah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And she she surprised me. She bought me tickets to go see Neil Young, and uh, it was a disappointment. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, his new stuff's a little too. Uh, yeah. I, I don't. I don't want to call it experimental, but it's just like, I don't know. Yeah, it's not. It's not for me. Give me the old stuff too. I agree completely. When we talk about bands that have continued since losing. Uh, like band members, I'm really happy to see Alice in Chains continue. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, that uh, I am. I'm luck, very lucky. A, a few years back, two or three years ago, uh, I got to see them twice within like four or five months of each other. Like they played in Hamilton, and then they played uh, in Toronto. I think who did they open for? Alice in Chains. Was it Ozzy? I don't know, but it was, but yeah, man, like William Duvall. Mm -hmm. and I, I used to get into arguments with like friends of mine. They're like, oh man, it's not Alice in Chains anymore. Like, no, like 100%, this guy is legit. And mm -hmm. he doesn't try to replicate Lane. Like he's just, he's trying to be him. Mm -hmm. And I, man, I appreciate the fact I can still go to Alice in Chains shows. Yeah. I mean, you can't replicate. Lane Stanley. No, no, no. I mean, but there's Chains always has that sound. That yeah, that harmonized Stanley. vocal, yeah. grungy mm -hmm. guitar, and like once when they released "Black Gives Way to Blue," that the, like their first album back after mm -hmm. Lane died, like you can tell Jerry Cantrell took on like a much 
much more prominent vocal role, which I am so cool with because I just I love his voice. Yeah, his his voice, his guitar playing, like he's just man. Oh yeah, it was, yeah, it was Allison Chains open for Corn. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, that, I've never seen Corn. There's... I I was set to see um, um, Judas Priest with Ozzy Osbourne oh. as part of their um, anniversary tour, but then in Hamilton. But then COVID hit. Oh no, um, Ozzy got sick. Yeah, with his Parkinson's, and he had to back out. And then they were waiting to bring somebody else in, but then COVID hit, and then pff, that one. Right. Bad. Yeah, what a crap time for musicians everywhere, man. Yeah. Unbelievable. I, I, yeah, I, was, like, I think I was just reading that Ozzy was going in for uh, surgery on like his neck and spine or something like that. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. So like, maybe he's going to maybe he's gonna give it one more shot to go on the road. I got to say, I, though, like he's I want you know, him, man, it impressed me. So like he it, he's not even the same guy when he's on stage. Mm -hmm. Like it was unbelievable. And I, I mean, I was as a guitar player, I was lucky enough to like I got to see Zach Wilde play, too. Mm -hmm. And his like 20 minute guitar solo in War Pigs was one of the greatest things I've ever seen, like walking around the crowd and like. Un unbelievable I, <laughs> I looked at rachel afterwards and i was like babe i'm never playing the guitar again <laughs> <laughs> i'm not worthy <laughs> i was like i can't like what's the point <laughs> i'm that way whenever i saw um alec lifeson play oh God, man i blew me away <sighs> that's oh uh, i wish I, I i i wish man i wish i had been able to to see them live I actually got to play on the same stage with him once back in 91. What? Yeah. That's back awesome. In, uh, the Kumbaya Festival that was put together by Molly Johnson. And um, I did um, acoustic guitar on stage. I was just like in the way background. But and the funny story is well, everybody who was performing, like you name it, of Canadian artists were here at this, this Kumbaya Festival to raise yeah. I can't remember what they're raising money for. But anyways... And Alec Lifeson was there, and everyone would always say, "Where's Alex? Have you seen Alex?" And they're like, "Hey, he's probably in his, in his trailer, because he'd never come out and socialize with anyone." I think this yeah. is just his his thing, right? So at the end of the show, we were doing um, all along the Watchtower, and in the corner of my eye, I saw this guy come up on the stage. And it was Alec Lifeson, and he picks his guitar up. To no tuning. He must have had somebody else tune it for him, and he just started wailing on his guitar. And everybody got down on their hands and knees and they were doing this in front of him while he was just standing there like a god playing his guitar. Oh, and uh, when he was done, he puts his guitar gently down and walks back off stage again and no one ever saw him again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's crazy. Well, there's, there's my life, life and story. That's amazing. Uh, the, clo the closest I've ever had anything like that, I I'm rehearsing at Roswell Studios once, Doug and I, and we walk in the door. I'm like, I, why do I know that? <laughs> like, I just heard for a couple of seconds and then uh, the owner was like, oh yeah, like Moist is in there. Like what? Yeah. Like some more, like they've got a big show. Like, the, 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 you know, they were playing in Kingston either the next day or the day after that. And so like before Doug and I went into our room to rehearse, maybe we just sat on the couches. <laughs> we're like, how often do you get to hear like an awesome band like that just rehearse? Yeah. Well, David Usher came to HMV when he did his first solo album. No way. Yeah. So we got to meet David Usher and his manager. And his manager wanted to have a deal on a bunch of CDs. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> the single flea market. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> David Usher is a great guy, though. He was really friendly. You met everybody. You met some fans. And he wasn't there for very long. But yeah, so he was, he was there. That's, I mean, that's, yeah, the uh, majority of the musicians I've met have genuinely been, you know, decent people, like, you know, good personalities. We're all, I mean, we're all kind of trying to get to the same, the same mm -hmm. mountaintop, I suppose, right? I met Prince once there, too. And uh, that was awesome. I could no. die a happy man after seeing Prince. Like, he, Holy uh, frig. 
it was on a Saturday. And at this time, he was married to a woman, and they lived in Toronto. And they had a house in Toronto. Anyways, and this this really short guy comes in, and he's got ball cap, big glasses, but you could. I just knew right away who it was. And he comes <laughs> and he's looking around and stuff, and and I go up to him. I'm like, um, I know who you are, but I'm not gonna, you know, make a big deal of it. I just want to say I appreciate your music and appreciate your you, man. And he shakes my hand. He goes, appreciate it. And then he looks around a little bit more, and then he just leaves. That's crazy. And I, went, and I went to the back room and I remember, fuck me, I just met Prince. <laughs> Everyone's looking at me like I've lost my mind. I'm like, dude, I just met Prince. Okay? Oh, I'm serious. Oh, you 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 did lose your mind. Like I, I would have lost it. <laughs> and I couldn't get over how short the guy was. I mean, I'm only five foot what, five six, five five five, and I have towered over him. And yet you see him on stage and he's like a yeah, monster he looks out so there. Funny but man meeting prince was was something else that's so cool man that's so cool yeah the, like purple rain man yeah one of my all-time favorite albums that's i own so it awesome. it's down, down here in the corner away <laughs> <laughs> safely yep yeah, HM working in HMV and CM the record, man. So probably one of the best times of my life. It was just man, when work when your job is music, like Yeah. I mean, it's like just be like being in, in the industry, like in one way or the other, where it's on the retail side or like whatever, it's just it's awesome. You know, there's always something new coming out. There's always something old to 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 find new for the first time, you know what I mean? Like and the the conversations you could have, yeah, yeah. Do I never forget this one customer was in? She wanted something different, and I'm like, okay. So what do you do? You know, if someone says they want something different, mm -hmm. so just off the cuff, I just said, well, Bell and Sebastian has a new album out. It was called Storytellers at that time, and so she bought it. And two days later, the lady came back in. She goes, that was awesome. Best album I heard in a long time. And I'm like, oh, cool. I'm glad you liked it. She goes, is there anything similar to that? And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. That's, I mean, just and think about that for a second, man. I mean, when you, you take the length of an album, you know, at least an hour, and who knows, maybe she listened to it multiple times. Like, yep. you just, you know, help fill that void for somebody. You know, and that, you, that's like the greatest feeling in the world. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And that was something that um, a lot of my uh, people that I looked up to with music growing up, and even um, till just recently, I had um, I've never ever met them, but I was introduced to a guy by the name of uh, Leon Economides who went by. The, the, um, the rocket scientist on radio yeah. and he was on um, over in South Africa and he, he, he was just perfect for what I wanted in a radio station because I don't like a lot of the mainstream stuff. I'm more of B sides yeah. you know, and, and songs that, that aren't fit for radio. You know, you, I want to listen to a song. I don't want to sit for three minutes and go, okay, that was interesting. I want to sit and have an experience. Absolutely. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, and that's what he would play on his radio station. At the end of his show, he'd always finish off with an epic, um, like, 20-minute, 30-minute song. And it was absolutely amazing. And, and fortunately, cool. he just passed away recently from COVID. But with the, we bonded over music. Um, and he, uh, two days before he passed away, he was still sending me messages from the hospital of different band pages on Facebook. I should check out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it was, awesome. it something else when I found out that he had passed away, but I mean, that's the power of music, right? It brings people together. I mean, here we are, we would never have met, but we had a bond and we'd always talk back yeah. and forth facebook and even when he was on on the radio um we'd always chat about songs and bands and stuff like that too so it was you know yeah man bring everybody together 
doesn't matter different races different cultures just everybody you know everybody's Amazing. there to have a good time yep like to me like that's <clears throat> that's i know that's that's my only religion is music yep 100 percent. yeah the world would be a much happier place if people just stop bitching and listen to music yeah and freaking and just go back to the way it was when you had to go to a store to buy an album yeah I mean, there is, there's a store here in town, in the mall, um, now in... Now and then, yeah. Now and then, which actually is owned by the people that I worked for, and it's in the record man in Belleville. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, but it, 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 there used to be a store in Belleville called Zap Records. And Zap Records was a dark, dingy, had posters up on the wall, old carpet. And, but it was all records, you know, it was yeah. used records. You walk in there and you just get that, that smell. Yeah. That old, man. Musty, albumy smell. And it was heaven. You can spend hours in that place. That's like me in music stores, man. I find they have a certain smell too. And I just like, it's. When yeah. you leave, when you walk out, you miss it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I just, I, you know, I miss the, I like the sound quality. Yeah. Like people, yeah. Don't, like people don't realize like a, you know, like a full wave file on a, like a, on a CD is going to be anywhere from, you know, 50 to a hundred megabytes. Whereas that thing gets shrunk down so much. Mm -hmm. and you and you lose so much like uh slipknot came out with we are not your kind a couple of years ago and that to me that's an album like a you want to buy either you know vinyl or yeah oh i just lost uh i lost him he's probably having some technical because i know we've had been storms in the area so I will uh, see if he comes back here in a second. But uh, that is, and there he is. <laughs> oh, man, I have no idea. Lost, what, man. It's literally like my, yeah, my safari just like decided oh, that right. it was done. For, I don't even remember what I, what, were, what was I talking about before? Uh, Slipknot. Oh, Slipknot, We Are Not Your Kind. Yeah, so like you, you want that album, and then like, man, you could get a good pair of headphones and like really listen to how that thing is put together because there are there is so much that you are not going to hear just by you know playing a a file th through bluetooth over your car speakers like you want to yeah i, I want i want to see the trend come back where people like really get into music like that yep yeah the last album that was very intricate um, actually, and I found out it was out because of you. Was the uh, last Rob Zombie album? Oh man, that's on that me. album was oh. amazing, man! Right? And, wow, jeez. Oh, like it, to me, yeah, it was just like, like unbelievable. And I mean, I read an article uh, with John Five, the guitar player, mm -hmm. and and he was and he was like, guys, like the Zombie album is going to be nuts. And I'm thinking, holy crap, like if he, like if John Five is saying this, like I had to prepare myself. Yeah. So then like we're listening, we we had a long car ride and we, we had it on and I'm just like, this is unbelievable. This is like the band saying like, hey, look at all the different stuff we can do. Yeah. Like they all, it just, it blew my mind. I mean, I, I enjoyed Zombie before. You know, we saw him live a few years ago, but like this album, like, like everybody, you need to hear this. <laughs> yeah. Like this, this, this is how you make an album. Like yeah. you go on a journey. Yeah. And it, 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 it mind fucks you too. Yes. Right? You yeah. Just listen to it and it's like, wow. Yeah. What an album. And that was properly produced too. 100%. Amazing. I ended up getting the vinyl for it. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. I was, I'm a huge fan of it. Huge fan of it. Well, I was surprised. You know, I saw your post on Facebook and you're like, the new Rob Zombie album. I'm like, there's a new Rob Zombie album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I'm sorry. 
yeah it's it's definitely i mean this is a good year the, like the last couple of years i mean as as crappy as COVID has been and, and stopping bands from performing live like some of these artists are coming up with some like mind numbing albums mm-hmm. there's a there's a whole lot of them and there's a whole lot of them you know still to come this year too yep and it's always nice to see the bands that have been around just come back and show the young ones how it's done yeah absolutely like uh we were at slayers like the final slayer show in toronto and like at the very end of it i'm like what now like no metal band today can touch that mm-hmm. <laughs> like they're like that was one of the like the the greatest things i've ever seen in my life and like they're done like that's it like they're i'm that's the last time they're gonna play in toronto like mm-hmm. who's who's gonna take the mantle from these guys yeah yeah and no one can yeah but, um band like that or bands like that come along once in a lifetime and when you've got them and then when they're gone it's like you know the it's epic and it's gone they're gone yeah it's it's kind of like that with rush for me oh yeah i know how big of a rush fan you are but man i saw them 13 times live but i uh remember coming home that day when neil pert passed away Oh, I had no idea. And it was a friend of mine messaged me. And she's like, hey, did you hear about New- um, Rush and Neil Peart? And I'm like, fuck, they're going to come up with another album. That's fucking awesome. Because they didn't know if they were going to, right? Yeah. And we didn't know uh, Neil was sick. But, and they always just said that, you know, timing was never going to be right for another album. And it turned out he had cancer. And um, he says, no, he passed away. And I was actually, it was Friday night. And Leon, the rocket scientist, was on that night. And he found out the same time I did. And there was quiet on the radio. Oh, and he yeah. was like, I just, I just heard the most distressing news. Like, Neil Peart just passed away. It was like losing a family member. And, um, you know, you'll never get that back again. No. Lifetime man. Yeah. And lifetime, drum, like, as far as drummers go. He was, like he was special man like he was like there i mean yeah there's a lot of amazing drummers in the world but like there was there was only will and will only ever be one nail here yep so your album that's out right now yes it's you know, uh there's four songs right there's uh born unholy allied christ abortion in St- Day, dead, die. There is, is. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I, I can't remember. I thought there was seven. Oh, okay. We had yeah, seven on tunes. Spotify. Let me go back to Spotify. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm still waiting for them to. We've we've had it submitted to Apple Music, but I mean, it's Apple. So <laughs> with them, it, it can it can take a bit. Um, but yeah, no, there was. Uh, this tor- this tortured soul, Christ abortion, God hates God, God thorn, stay dead, die, and holy alive. There's, I don't know if there's one more. I feel like I'm forgetting one. Okay. Oh, you're amazing. One, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven. Five. Yeah. Yeah, when I was on the last time. Yeah, seven. Thank you. Yeah. It only went up as far as stay dead, die. So now it's showing God hates God and this tortured soul. Yeah. And like, oh, <laughs> the one I love is, I mean, I get to drive around at work at night and listen to it in my car. And man, like, <laughs> I apologize to your speakers in advance for the bass. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff. That's well, I, I, I that's appreciated heavy. seeing songs that were seven and eight minutes long, too, man. I was like, yeah yeah man absolutely and it's like you know uh friends with friends of mine and just you know tune low play slow yeah you know that that doom metal it's just man it's so much fun you know people can you know they can bang their heads but you also get a little bit more freedom to kind of interact with people and it's just it's awesome 
uh, like I have so much fun playing the tunes. I mean, the studio was great, but I mean, being able to get out and actually play them live now, like that's now the real fun can begin. Now, where did you record them? Was it here? Uh, I, it, I, it, it was called, I don't know if it's still called. Uh, it was called concept audio, uh, mm -hmm. produced by a, a gentleman by the name of Duncan Holt. Uh, awesome producer. I know he plays in a band or two around town here as well. Um, but he's got a, like a pro studio set up and yeah, just go in, you know, you pay, nice. pay, pay your hourly and do your thing. And it's, uh, I live right down the street from, uh, the tragically hip house. Oh yeah. That man, <laughs> he'd, yeah. he'd be like a millionaire to record there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I don't see too many cars in there anymore. No, man. It was like, I don't know, that the last time I knew it was around like two or 250 bucks an hour. Wow. To record in there. Like, eh, that's crazy. I know the Headstones did their last couple albums in there. You know, funny enough, I wasn't the, the biggest fan of them. I mean, I, I enjoyed them here and there or whatever. Um, but I, I got managed to get tickets to the, uh, rock and the baker show in town a few years back mm -hmm. to, I guess two years ago at the prison. And I took a buddy of mine, <clears throat> just, he, he's, you know, one of the best, Chris, if you're watching at all, what's up, man. Um, but yeah, I took, uh, I was like, you know, he helped us move into our new place and then that's how I wanted to repay. I didn't want to, you know, pizza and beers, you know, typical. I was like, let's take him to a friggin' show. And he's like the headstones are like his his jam. And on like honestly, I came out of that a way bigger fan of the headstones. Right. Much uh, years and years ago, I saw Billy Talent at the K. Well, when it was the K Rock Center. Mm -hmm. And again, like I wasn't the biggest Billy Talent fan. Like you know, if they were on, sure, whatever. But like I left that show going, holy crap, they were awesome. And I just, I'm excited that we're slowly getting back into being able to, to go and hear these bands play these songs live. And yeah, I, well, there, there, there's one thing to be able to sit in your own house and listen to them play, but being this able to see your favorite band play live yeah, is a whole different experience altogether. 100%. 100%. I was kind of hoping because this year, well, last year actually, was the year that I was supposed to see Priest, um, and then I was going to go see Nightwish, and then COVID hit. Oh so yeah, I mean, man. Yeah. So Priest is coming back. I think they're coming to Hamilton, which I don't Where know. Are they uh, playing? Hopefully, I'll be. Um, is it the Coliseum? Is it, is it that first concert? Hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot that they have like an arena there. Oh no, I was more curious if it was there. Oh, I guess they have. Yeah, yeah, but they have like first Ontario Concert Center or something. Yeah, and that's that. like one of the honestly one of the best venues I've ever been to in my life. Like sound wise, I saw yeah, just, Alice in Chains there, and it was awesome. Dude, I'm just googling it here to see Judas Priest Hamilton. Uh, if it's pretty, yeah, like if, depending on who they're touring with, they are going to be first Ontario Center. Oh, yeah, man, that place is oh, I love the sound in there. The acoustics in that building, you'll appreciate them, doesn't matter where you are. Driving into Hamilton, I was kind of like, "Ew, this is gross." But like once, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> once, once we got like in there and got into the venue, it was it was pretty cool. Yeah, but I know, like for you as an audio guy, I know you'll really like, and and the, like the mix was perfect. Like every every instrument, the vocals, everything cut through exactly the way you would expect it to. Yeah, yeah. Sound is key for me so i'm hoping to get to get down to see them i can't remember who's opening for them 
I just had it up too. I can't remember. But then I was supposed to go see Nightwish too, and I've been dying to see Nightwish for years. And finally, they were coming to Toronto, and I was going to go see them, and then freaking COVID hit, and now they're not coming back. <laughs> well, here's the thing: weren't you telling me that your daughter's moving like 13 hours away? Yep. So what you do is you just wait and you plan for something and to and, and hit the show on the way down there. Yeah, there you, you know go. I mean, maybe you, you crash for a night in a you know a little dive motel or something just to just yeah. to be able to see the band, you know. Well, if I pay for the tickets for Nightwish, I'll be getting a dive motel because those <laughs> tickets are cheap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. Flex. that's crazy. That that's I wanted to go see the Chili Peppers years ago, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not paying like 250 bucks for like third deck yeah like, like what, what is that <laughs> jeez that's why i like the metal shows man like you never really pay more than like 40 or 50 bucks and like you're there for hours and you have an awesome time and you see awesome bands and how was the uh show in ottawa how was the crowd was oh man it was it was they were, it was great like there was a probably a bigger crowd than i was i I didn't even think they were going to allow that many people into a building. No, oh, yeah. But I mean, I'm, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> yeah, that's but, right. Uh, but it, it, man, it was great. Uh, the crowd was awesome. Um, there was even, we, we have some live video, a few videos up on YouTube. Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, I couldn't really tell from like from where I was standing, but watching the videos after the fact, I was like, holy crap, the lighting was insane. Like, yeah. just mind blow i mean i like i was facing the other way so i couldn't see but like watching the video back i'm like holy crap that's so cool <laughs> and that's and that's like that's what you don't get by just sitting at home listening to an album on a couple of speakers you don't get you don't get that experience you don't get the lighting you don't get the full like you want the sound to fill the room and just like mm-hmm. yeah. get people into it and it, and it, it was cool too. Cause I mean, like we're, we're do, we're, I mean, we're doom metal, right? We're, we're, di- we're kind of a different breed. We're a little bit slower, we're slower. We're heavier. Yeah. Like, man, like my bass is tuned drop F like <laughs> it's unreal. Like it's so heavy, but it's different. And I think that we fit in well with the bands that we played with. Like, I feel like we complimented them and they complimented us. And it was just, I feel like everyone that was at the show got mm-hmm. a wide variety of, of, of the different types of metal. So yeah, uh, October 23rd overtime in Kingston. Oh yeah. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be a riot. I haven't been there and I don't think I've ever been there over time. The stage is uh, honestly one of the funnest stages to play on because it's huge. Like, you know, when you go down and look at stages that say, for example, like the mansion that probably have the floor space in my bathroom <laughs> and trying to fit all the gear and like band members up there. It's like, yeah. I like to be, I like to be able to have the room to, to move around. I don't like being just stuck in one spot. So what's next for God Thorn? Do you like, there's that show coming up. Do you have other shows lined up? We're looking at other shows. I know that um, we are looking to possibly get back into the studio later on in the year, early next year to, to do a little something, something. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just, uh, right now, yeah, we're just trying to get out there and, play some shows and spread the good gospel of God thorn. <laughs> um, and yeah, like it's October 23rd. If, if any listeners in, in town, you're looking for, for a good show and a fun night. Uh, all that, like the, the guys in the other bands that are coming up, like they're, they're really cool dudes too. And it's just, it's going to be a really, a really fun night. Now we talked about um, Alice in Chains and how the singer has the Lane Stanley um, sort of channeling his Lane Stanley. You also have a YouTube channel called Down in a Hole, which yes. every time I hear that name, I say that <laughs> I think of the song Down in a Hole off the Dirt album, which is actually one of my favorite songs by Alice in Chains. Oh, me too, man. Do you want to know how that came about? 
So I'm sitting on the couch one day. So I'm just I'm sitting on the couch one day, and and Blaine is like, he's just. I can't, I can't remember which band it was, but he's like texting me all kinds of these like random song titles because we were trying to think of a name for the channel. Mm-hmm. And I looked at Rachel and I was, and I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know if she was wearing her Alice in Chains t-shirt, but like, I just started kind of like, thinking like, I'm a Chains fan. He's a Chains fan. Like, let's, let's see what their song. And I like, I'm, then it just slapped me right in the face. Because, like, we wanted something, like, originally it was going to be something silly, like, 27 inches underground. Or like, because we were, we were in a basement, so we were going to do something silly, like, math-wise. Mm-hmm. And then just, yeah, as soon as I was going through the list of Chains tunes and he saw it down in a hole, I'm like, why did I not think of that before? <laughs> like, so I sent that to him, and it was just like, yep, done immediately. And then he checked it out and like it was free and clear on YouTube to use as the channel. So it's just, it's awesome, man. And it all started like he was over and we were hanging out and we we're just, you know, shooting the breeze, like just the way you see on, on our videos. Mm-hmm. And we're just sitting on the couch and I'm like, hey, man, like, what if we like put a camera in front of us <laughs> and just did exactly what we're doing right now? Like it's lit, and, and that's what it is. It's just him and I, just bros, just shooting the breeze about different stuff, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's totally different than anything I've ever like done before, but mm-hmm. it's it, I it's cool. It's it's neat to have that on the side of the music stuff. It, I find YouTube is a great outlet. It's um, it, it yeah, it's it's cool. It's awesome. And you, when you guys, when you sit and watch your videos, you tell you guys are just having a great time while you do. Oh, yeah, like nothing's rehearsed. Like we'll just, we'll sometimes like there's a video or two where like I don't even know what we're talking about until the camera's rolling. Right. It's just like totally off the cuff. Like, but you know, usually we'll have kind of like a, a sort of like a game plan. Like here's the subject that we're going to talk about. And then we just kind of go, like we go the same way we would be if like we're sitting, you know, sitting at each other's places on the couch. And I just like, I spent uh, like over COVID, like I spent a lot of time, like I'm a huge nerd, like I'm a huge pro wrestling nerd. Mm -hmm. So like I, I, there's a bunch of like podcasts and channels I follow on YouTube. So, and, and you know, I'd be listening to them at work and I just figured, you know, like, like, why not? Like, why not give it a shot and and see how it goes? And like, it's been, it's, it's been going pretty well. Like we're close to a hundred subscribers now. Um, we're getting like, we're getting the views up there. Like, it's just, I mean, it's just in its infancy, right? Like we just started, Mm -hmm. but, uh, but it's, it's fun. It's, it's really fun. Yeah. Well, like I said, YouTube's a great outlet to get your, your own personality out too, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm, um, I've always been a bit of an introvert. So for me, after I've always wanted to do this, and I've always wanted to do something similar to what I'm doing with the with my script doctor stuff. Yeah, but you know, you're always busy with family, and that always gets put in a side burner. But the minute my youngest daughter, when she moved out and she got married, I claimed this her bedroom as my office. I said, I licked it. It's mine. It's, this is what I'm going to do. So I, I hooked it all up. I started my channel and, um, it's, it's great to be able to talk to people. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, for me, if I'm like one-on-one with someone like face to face, I I'll quiet, I'll be quiet and, and shy away a bit. Right. But when you're on here, there's something liberating about being able to, to talk to somebody over, like what we're doing right now on yeah. video. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and we have a lot of fun doing what we do too. And our, our stuff isn't scripted neither. Well, it is scripted, but we sort of unscript it. We will, we'll take the piss out of the scripts and go off script and try to throw everybody off. And stuff that's, like that. that's so cool. That's awesome. And I mean, that's just like, just getting out there and, and doing what you want to do. Like, Mm-hmm. more people should uh more people should hop on board 
You only live once. Yeah. Fuck, man, I just turned 50. So I figured I better do it now. Oh, oh man, I'm for, I hit 35 this year. Oh, is that right? Jeez. Yeah, man. I was like, I was a pop when I worked for you, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even legal drinking age yet. <laughs> uh, we had some awesome people that worked there, too. Oh, man. man, we had the best. We had the best staff. It was awesome. Like, and, and yeah, and uh, Hollywood. Yep. Uh, yeah, her partner, he's, uh, her, we're, 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 I don't know if we haven't talked about releasing what his actual name is, so we're just going to keep calling him Cameraman Lloyd. Yep. But, so in the odd episode of Down in a Hole, he'll just kind of be like the background guy that we're keeping like locked out the basement window that just keeps hollering in, you know what I mean? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, but like he's awesome, man, great personality. Um, but yeah, like you guys were, you guys were awesome and I could yeah. go back. I, um, I do. Yeah, if we could go back in time, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, still keep all the cool stuff that we have now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> sort of had an add on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like yeah. keep our, you know, our, like our wives and kids and all that stuff, which is like maybe go back to like the early 2000s. <laughs> When social media wasn't, one. man, yeah, just oh, social media is just so killer nowadays. Oh, it's it's nasty out there, right? Mm -hmm. You can't have an opinion without getting attitude for it. You know what I mean? It, it's so stupid right now. In the world we live in, is we we live in an entitled world right now. One hundred percent. Everybody's entitled, and it's stupid. Back when when I was managing, like. Um, when I managed Bata stores and uh, when I was with HMV, if you didn't pull your weight, you'd be out the door. And yeah. back when I was working for a, uh, for Bata, I wasn't Neil Hyderman. I was Neil Fireman because I fired so many people. <laughs> <laughs> that was my nickname. We're like, Neil, Fire, Neil Fireman. Oh. Because if you didn't pull your weight, then I would uh, you'd have to go. Yeah. But now it's like, you know, people are so demanding. This is what I want. This is what I need. And this is what you're going to give me. Yeah. And I do have a guy on my staff right now that's like that. And unfortunately, he's unionized, right? So yeah. my hands are tied. And it's like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Unions are, fun, are, are fine if you need them. But they can also be a pain in the ass. Uh, yeah. Well, man, I was uh, tech for Bell. Mm -hmm. Bell, Technic Bell Technical Solutions, and I went on medical EI, like for for mental health reasons. Uh, it was actually after a suicide attempt, and mm -hmm. one day I got a letter in the mail from my manager that said, basically, if you're not back to work on Monday, it's job abandonment. See you later. <laughs> and that at that point in time, they were like basically. I had my the one union rep I actually trusted was on vacation, mm -hmm. so like he couldn't reach him. And the other one like was just like a baby, like fresh into being a union rep and couldn't help me whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So for me, like me personally, I I fail to see the the upside in a union. Yeah, unions haven't helped me whatsoever. No, they. More uh, of a hindrance than anything else. Yeah, and, and, and a hindrance that you have to pay for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not in it, but the the officers that I yeah. have are. It's, it's just a pain in the ass. Yeah, no thanks. The, you, yeah, the union thing's not for me. And I'm, I, yeah, I'm all about that. Just like work hard, do your job. Yeah. Go home. Exactly. What's the problem? Don't be so demanding. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Life. Oh, good times, man. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> good times. But at least, like, for me anyway, like, there's definitely, there's, there's a lot of music on the go right now. Um, like to give a shout out as well out there to uh, my boys Ryan and Jevin, who are with Doug and I in the Day Street Brothel coming back to do our reunion show on that night of the 23rd as well. 
Nice. I'm pretty stoked about that. I haven't played, I haven't played in this band like a live show in 11 years. So I'm pretty mm-hmm. excited about it. So yeah, so I think we're opening the night and then mm-hmm. we've got the, uh, the bands from outside of town coming in and then God Thorn, and we're going to be headlining that for the CD release. So I think we're, we're going to have albums and other, other stuff there as well. So for those that have, you know, appreciate the proper quality of sound. Yeah, that's right. That will that'll be by the way to go. <laughs> Not MP3s, by the no the album. I mean, I honestly like. I'm just thinking about this for the first time now. But I, I mean, I may even speak to the guys and say I, I'm not sure what the cost is of having anything pressed on vinyl. But that'd be it'd be pretty cool to just have like a limited, limited, a limited yeah, yeah, like a limited pressing of them, just in case, you know. I have a comment from somebody from Hypnotic Rocket, and this is the internet gives everyone a voice. Problem is, ninety nine percent of them need to be put on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, ain't that the truth? Mm. Especially right now, I'm so sick and tired of hearing people's complaints about masks, in about vaccinations, and about the upcoming election. Uh, I know. Like mm-hmm. people to shut up. Yeah, let's go vote. The people. You don't have to about it. Sorry, I just have to readjust myself here because my phone's about to die. Oh, so that's all right. I just got to plug myself in here. I don't know how they plan on making electric cars a thing when phone batteries can't even last a full day. <laughs> but anyway. To put a lot of a uh, lot of chargers around, right? It's a good thing you're not watching porn or anything on that TV behind you. No, we had some I'm wrestling, <laughs> old school wrestling, man, old school, old school. wrestling. Yeah. Oh, we got a you, oh, you have AEW paused. Oh, you are wonderful. Yeah, sorry, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you only have a good woman when they pause a show for you. Oh man, she's she's into it just like I am. It's awesome. Like we went to, uh, we went and watched WWE SummerSlam live in Toronto a couple of years ago, and like it was awesome. We took her dad. Was it for Father's Day? We got him. Yeah, we took her dad for Father's Day, and then we went to the the live WWE Raw taping the night after. And mm-hmm. yeah, man, it was such a cool. Like it's not. It, it's different than being at like a concert. Like you got the live crowd, but it's like live crowd live crowd for like a broadway show but like on steroids nice. did you freeze you get oh no you good. Uh, okay. no not <laughs> I you froze on me there for a no. second. Oh, I can... <laughs> i've got another comment here from hypnotic rock this is apparently someone in spain named zorro isn't very much a favor of masks yeah i mean it's... Yes, zorro can have his masks <laughs> I just, I just want life to get back to the way it was. Oh, Jesus. I just, I mean. I don't know if it'll ever get back to the way it was before, to be honest. No, I don't, I don't think so either. I really don't. People are just going to keep bitching anyways. You know, at least like, at least my kids are young enough that with these at least they're going to kind of more or less grow up with it this way not that i not that i'm happy about that but at least they're not going to know the way life was before like we do yeah that's right you can almost think we'll be able to say but man we'll be able to say like back in our day when it was like you know 18 (laughs) months ago yeah that's right god you know, when I, the other day, when in January, when I turned 50, it's like, where does the time go? Because here I am, I'm 50. It's, it's insane. Even I, mean, I look like my daughter's almost double digits, man. I, yeah. I know. I shouldn't say that. I know. But like, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's crazy. And I mean, the, the cool thing with music is like years and years ago, I like I I mean I I pretty well like stopped playing like for years like altogether. You know, like mm-hmm. I might pick up a guitar here and there or whatever. But I said I always said that like when my kids got old enough, I'd get back into it. 
and mm-hmm. holy frig did i get back into it <laughs> <laughs> and then and i couldn't be happier man and like i gotta like thank doug for for bringing me along with the the projects and trusting me and my abilities and we just man we have an awesome time like when we went to ottawa like we got to we went and we all walked around parliament you know like i would never drive to ottawa to walk around parliament <laughs> but I loved ottawa when i lived there it was a beautiful place and part man parliament like and some of the, the like the architecture just blew my mind but like if it wasn't for godthorn i wouldn't have been there yeah so like i just yeah, that's i'm excited to see where just where we get to go and what we get to do it's just the beginning yeah it's it's so much fun yeah and if like if we happen to make a couple of dollars here or there like cool but like it's just fun man yeah and that that's that that's the extent like what's the word i'm looking for i can't think of right now that, that that's the thing about music Back when my favorite era is the 70s and music was made for the love of music. People played music because they loved it. As it got later on in in the decades, things started to change in the late late 80s. The 90s, it started to become more greedy. Yeah. Right. 100 percent. You know more money more money more money and that was the downfall of the music industry um uh, copyright laws are so archaic that they need to be changed um the the bands have the right to you to own their music right but what what and as a as a youtube creator this frustrates me to no extent because if i buy an album I don't like I don't own the album outright, right? Because that belongs to the artist. But having paid for some of it, I should have the right to say if I want to use a piece of music on um a little video that I want to do on YouTube. Yeah. I should be able to do that. But way the copyright laws are you get your ass kicked and everything else on that oh, shit. Yeah. Right? Because I'm not making money off of it. If I made money off of it, then yes, I would uh, expect to have to pay the artist and say, you know, I used your video for this and I'm being charged for or paid for it or I'm getting money for this. So I'm giving you that money yeah. because I don't own that song. But, you know, it's, you know, the music industry is one big greed. And like you said, you, it's got to get back to playing for the fun of it. Yeah, being up on stage playing for fans um yeah there's nothing there's nothing like it and, and on either end whether you're playing or you're you're there in attendance like mm-hmm. there's there's absolutely nothing like it i mean regardless of genre you know go go and support your local artists go out and because like the last couple of years have not been easy on any of them no no and, you know this is something that like a lot of like a lot of time and a lot of hours get put into and and then like all of a sudden bands like oh yeah like you can't get together anymore you can't Mm -hmm. you can't play your shows anymore you can't go to the recording studio anymore like like way to tie everybody's hands behind their back you know what i mean I, I, i know there's a lot of different other industries that got hit as well but like man the music industry took a shit kicking. <laughs> yeah, it did. And, you know, we need to bring that fun back again, you know, with the music industry. Absolutely. So, so I'm glad that people are able to get out now and starting to see more shows. And Oh, I, yeah, man. It's that way, but not revert back to the way it was before. Because at some point in time, with this whole COVID stuff, you you, you got to look at it like some kind of a flu bug or something like that and just say you know what it's not going to get any better you know it, it's each individual person is responsible for their own health yeah um if you don't want to wear a mask i mean that's your problem if you if you don't want to wear a mask don't wear a mask but you don't be 
hypocritical towards somebody else if they want to or if they expect you to go into their business. Yeah, yeah. Um, like be respectful. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I don't like were people that way at the shows. Were they like wearing masks and stuff like that, or were they? Were once, they, once everybody got sit it like down like sit it at their i mean they can't i don't like to i don't think they're like they're not allowing mosh pits yet right. and that sort of thing so like when you go into a venue you still have to stay seated but like once people sat down masks were off no problem right. i mean my person like personally i just feel like everybody like get the vaccine let them call it an an, an, an endemic mm-hmm. so instead of a pandemic an endemic which means that yeah like it's just it is what it is and we have to deal with it so be it like i just i feel those two if those two things happen we'd probably be in a much better spot yep just like i mean i remember being a kid in public school like going to the gymnasium and to get whatever vaccine it was like and there was no bitching or arguing about it, it like just give me the needle let me go back to class like yeah, yeah exactly they're not trying to kill us they're not like just get, <laughs> get the stupid shot and move on with yeah. it like it's yeah, they're they're not putting little chips in your body to control you. Or and, and and look at the per- yeah, and look at the percentage of these people that are <laughs> whining and complaining about it that are like loaded with tattoos. Yeah, like I know, <laughs> like I I can't even just like get the stupid shot. Let's move on. Like it's like I've most people I know have it. Like I've got both of mine. Like I yeah, I got both of mine too, but I didn't get, I didn't gain any like 5g networks out of my ears or anything. Like I didn't grow a third nipple or anything. I, I don't think I have, I haven't grown a third nipple. Have I? No. I see. Yeah. It's cool. No problem. <laughs> but know. the only thing right now that really is frustrating me is people who are, um, protesting in front of hospitals. Oh yeah, man! I it's can't. Like, pick a time I, and place, dude. And hospital is not one of them. That's it's never one of them ever. Like that's, yeah. I man, I can't even. And and you know what bothers me? I was reading that apparently Trudeau said that if he was to be reelected, then he would introduce a law that would make that you know illegal and a, and a punishable offense but like why the hell is that not happening now yeah like, exactly. don't use that as a political ploy like just do it like yeah. I, just, I don't i uh, music man that's why i love music give me a, yeah, that's and, right, a yeah. guitar a bass and an amp and like just let me go and I, yep. that's, that's all i need you got my frustrations out on stage yep absolutely take it yeah. out on the strings you know, it was a, car, or a, a cancer ward they were protesting at. I mean, like these people don't have enough on their plate already, oh, right? Near the yard, you got to, well, I, people are stupid. Yeah, I, I can't even. And like my partner's sister, like she's a, a nurse in Newmarket. So like, it's funny listening, you know, I'm just like Jim Bob and whoever, like on the internet, like bashing the medical science. Meanwhile, like, what this woman has to say, I'm going to take into consideration, like not that like national inquirer Facebook meme that you want to share and you know, pretend that that's factual information. Like I I can't even man. (laughs) I can't, (laughs) I, I don't know. I was just like, I don't know. I was raised to like, you know, trust science. Yeah, me too. So and that's that's why I mean, that's why people make the big bucks. And yeah, it's like just because you have the ability to comment on Facebook posts doesn't mean you know more than yeah, scientists. Right. Like yeah, I, maybe, I, maybe you should, you know, got a degree and yeah, you, know, you could be uh, smart enough to comment all you want. But yeah, you know, I, shut yeah. the fuck up. And just get on. <laughs> exactly. Just do. Just yeah. Just do what the scientists say. We'll just move on. I don't. I don't know, man. All right. So we, uh, you had a question for me before we started. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. I'm glad we were going to get into this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm curious as to who you believe the front runner will be for the next doctor. Yes. Um, I personally would like to see it rested for a while. 
you know what? I was I'm I was kind of thinking the same thing. It needs to just go away for maybe five, ten years. Yeah, and, and bring then, it back when the world is ready for it. Yeah, and if if it's going to be a woman, then let it be a woman. But now, right now, you know, when Jody was announced, it wasn't the right time. They mm. they, they thought it was, but it wasn't. Um, I think they picked the wrong actress. Um, they picked the wrong actress. They brought in the wrong writers, and their producer's a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like it was i mean yeah even towards like the end of capaldi's run like it was like yeah it was started to get i just and i love capaldi, I, man. I just, that's and, and that's why i would stick around too because i love capaldi as well but yeah i just like it's a, it was a hard the newer stuff is just a hard watch and like for me i don't know david tennant number 10 like he's my i mean he's my he's my jam he's my go-to <laughs> but i gotta say and i believe it was a, a matt smith episode um the van gogh episode yep honestly when i it took me i probably watched it two or three times before i finally realized what that episode was actually about and i don't i mean i'm sure you know because of what you do but like when I learned that that episode was all about like depression, yep. Like man, I cried so hard just mm -hmm. having dealt with what I've dealt with. And as soon as like I'm watching, I'm like, he can only see this monster in the rearview mirror. Yeah, like he's over, but he can only see it behind him. Like and once I put it all together, it like blew my mind. Yeah. And that is the power of a good writer. Yes, exactly. And that's what they're missing right now. Yeah. You know, they, they try to tackle um, with the stuff with uh, Graham's cancer and stuff like that, right? Yeah. They try to tackle that. And they, what the doctor does is just brush them off and say, you know, I can't talk about this because I'm, I'm not social or antisocial and shit like that. Man, if a friend of mine did that to me, I would have popped them in the mouth and they right? would have been Yeah. Anymore. But well, like you said, you pick an episode like the Van Gogh episode. That'd be properly written. I mean, I bawled my eyes out watching that one too. That's that's my favorite episode out of all. Even though Tenet's my favorite Doctor overall, that particular episode was by far my favorite. Like it hit me the hardest. And then yeah, like you, I really appreciate good, good writing. And like Grace was got me into like man, I've been watching Coronation Street for years now. As yeah, 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 and it's just I mean, honestly like it, it's some of the best writing you'll ever see on TV, and it's just like it's friggin' real life. Yeah, it's not like writing a is is important. Words it, are important. Very much so. Very much so. I agree completely. I mean, when I have because right now we're doing we have a show coming up at the end of the month, and I have a script right here, and we go through, go through the script. And when I go through these things and I, I highlight the, because I do the narrating and I do the odd line here and there, it, it's this, the words that are put from, in this case, you know, typewriter to paper or whatever, you know, this is what, like, so people's imagination, you oh, know, yeah, it's just amazing, you know, like, I can't remember who wrote this episode. So before, before yeah. Rachel got into Doctor Who with me. She used to make fun of me for that episode, Dinosaurs in Space. Okay. Oh, okay. So yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. She's like, are you kidding me? Like, what? There's an episode <laughs> called Dinosaurs in Space. Like, you watch this shit? I'm like, just wait for it. Yeah. Watch it. We'll get there. And we did. And, like, like it was just, it, it was awesome. Like, so then, like, when we finally got there, she understood what the episode was about and like that it wasn't just a silly thing with dinosaurs in space. Like there's so much more to that episode, like yeah. so yeah. much more. Yep. In the, I, word, I, I, it's like words are like music. Um, yeah. It's the important part. You got to have words. You got to have music. Absolutely. And second, you got to have someone that can act the parts that are on the paper. Man, have you in ever, you ever you ever get into Dexter? Yep. 
how uh, how freaking pumped are you about the new season? Yeah, I can't wait. I'm losing my mind, and I would love to talk spoilers right now, but somebody over here hasn't finished it yet, so I can't. <laughs> I, I really have to watch what I say. Yeah. Um, but the showrunner, so like the one of the original writers that did up to the end of season four, mm-hmm. which was really when Dexter was like the bee's knees, you know what I mean? But like the fact that he's coming back to do it. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> grown up Harrison. Oh man, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. We'll have to, you know what we should do? We should have another chat after the, like the, the first episode. Yeah. Yeah, we should. Yeah. That'll be good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really stoked. But if I were to choose a female doctor, let's go back to this. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Haley Atwell. Yeah. Or Joanne Lumley. I haven't on like honestly, I haven't even I haven't even thought of another But it should be back to being a male. To do it. That's, it that's back to being a male though. That, that's yeah, that's how I feel. I mean, I understand the argument as to why it could be a female, but like I'm also pretty traditional in the sense. Same thing with like Bond. Like, yes. Oh, this this new one is gonna. I don't know. <laughs> I'm on the fence with this one because, I mean, it looks good. I saw the trailer. Oh, it looks fantastic. But how going woke as fuck? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna go and see it just because, like. It's I bond. like I, I literally yeah, it's bond. Like I literally have a double oh seven tattoo on me. Like I gotta go and see it. Yeah. But I'm I don't know. I, I'm not going in with high hopes and I'm I'm thinking maybe that'll be for the best. Like maybe I'll end up yeah, enjoying, yeah, yeah. enjoying it more. Yeah. What I oh. saw the last movie that I saw that I really, really liked was the Suicide Squad. I the, really enjoyed like the, the the new one there yeah with man i want to see it just because it's got john cena i'm such a nerd yeah. for like john cena you know, Peter um, capaldi is in it too what capaldi yeah. is in suicide squad yeah he plays yeah thinker. that's crazy okay yeah, i definitely have to check that out that's awesome yeah all i have to well, say I- is we need a thinker um prequel movie he needs to come back just give him screen time i don't care what he's doing i'm happy i'll watch it yeah like I um like when he came in as a doctor, like I just I fell in love with him. Like, yeah, crusty he's old grandpa. He's awesome. Fan. yeah, and he's a fan too. Yeah, and that's Show. like, and you can tell, like you can you can see that come through in their acting. Like you can, it's like musicians on stage. Like you can tell when they're enjoying what they're doing, and you can tell when they're up there just because there's a paycheck at the end of it. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And that's what was missing with 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 Jody. Yeah, it just um, wasn't there. It was like she yeah. was just filling the role. <laughs> like, give me some, give me some like funky, wood. give me some funky color suspenders, and yeah, yeah, no, it's like Mark from York, and <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> that's yeah. Oh well, man, it was so it was it was bad. I mean, I mean. To be honest, I watched maybe 15 minutes of an episode with her and I turned it off and I never went back. I think we, we watched, I think, maybe we watched maybe three or four, maybe a few more episodes than that. We got to a certain point and it just, like, it, it, there wasn't anything that, like, drew us back in to watch the next one. Yeah, it was and like um, the magic school bus, but in the TARDIS. Right. You know, they took the science fiction out of it. Yeah. And they turned it into a preachy... People don't want to be preached. They want to have some kind of escapism. Exactly. And they That's what it's all about. Too, right? 50 plus years of the science fiction program. I mean, it was um, the BBC's flagship. It yeah. made them so much money for 50 more years. And then they took all that. I mean, the BBC needs to run a master class on how to fuck up your own flagship show. Right. <laughs> well, just the problem is people listening to the internet. Yeah. Like, yeah. I hate it because it's it's almost like there are too many 
there's there's so much integrity being sacrificed because of like artistic integrity being sacrificed just because of you know appeasing the vocal minority which just so happens to live in our faces on social media mm -hmm. like yeah yeah what what yeah. a world man we need to go back to simpler times turn the tv off or turn the news off anyways on the tv turn the news off yeah turn off I've, the news i haven't watched the news in years man i just it's so depressing i just i can't be bothered no it's yeah it's tough the only time i'll really do it it isn't even like canadian election time it's american election time right that's and then even then it's just like with cnn all the time yeah like uh, i know better than to watch fox news yeah you know what i mean <laughs> And that last election down in the States was, it was like a comedy sketch that right. just kept on running. And then they had to storm the Capitol. <laughs> Man. And he gets away with it. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, no, nothing. No. Like, are you kidding me? Nothing happens to him. Unbelievable. Yeah. But that's life. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Biden is mentally there to run the country myself right now. I some don't of the stuff he's doing, but I think you're going to see Camilla Harris step in eventually. That's that's the thing. Like he may not 100 percent be there, but at least he's smart enough to put the right people underneath him to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, Trump would take, like, his golfing buddies and, like, here's a position of power for you and here's one for you. Like, yeah, honestly, like, if, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. It's just, just because of, I mean, let's face it, like, Biden's getting up there. Mm -hmm. If over the course of time, like, she has to step in, like, I think they're in all right shape. Yeah. But... Yeah, man. Yeah, just the the last bunch of years down there. Like, I don't even know. It's crazy that it's, that that we're. I mean, we're not, but we are so close to it. Yeah, it's like it's scary. That's why we just you know we we listen to music and we go and we play music and we forget all about that shit and we just have a good time. You put your headphones on and tune out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Put your headphones on, listen to some, some Godthorn and listen to, yeah, there you go. <laughs> listen to, to, to how interested in religion we are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was one, there was a one song. Uh, what was it? I, I wrote it down because I remember I sat and I listened to the songs. Actually, there's the last two I need. To I think out. I know which one you're going to ask me about. I'm pretty excited. Stay dead. Die. Okay. And I'm listening to this song, and all of a sudden, this voice comes in my in my speakers or my headphones, and I'm like, "Fucking devil's talking to me, man!" Because I'm like, "Holy shit!" It's like demon this shit. Oh, you're, oh, you mean the Seven Tenants? <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah. Yeah. So what that is? That's like the I I guess um, I think it, like that was kind of like Andy's baby. It was that we actually started off the show and at Mavericks by having like just lights are down and that's playing and it's, oh, yeah. it's loud as shit. And like, it's, <laughs> so it's basically like the, the, it's like the satanic ritual type of type of deal. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, to, to say Satanism, Satanism is actually kind of neat. Not to, you know, I'm not into any kind of stuff, but like in terms of like what they believe, like it's kind of interesting, but that's all that was. It was just like him reading off like the, like a satanic ritual and it just, it like it fits Godthorn, like it yeah. just yeah it does and like it was really cool and like when we had it playing um before the show at mavericks like it was just it's going on and like kind of we're kind of all huddled at the drum set just kind of getting pumped up and like it got me just ready to go man like that was my first full band like stage performance yeah like since i i was in the day street brothel 11 years ago like i did some acoustic stuff live but not the full, like the full thing. Um, so it was, man, it was, it was cool. It was something else, but yeah, that track it's, it's awesome. If you just play it loud, like get your yeah. headphones on, like turn the, if you got the stereo going, turn the sub up, like, 
Yeah. It's it's different. It's a different experience. It's different than than anything I've done before and like I love it. It's yeah. it's cool, you know, like I'll be able to wear a white suit for the Day Street brothel and then I just wear all black for Godthorn, you know what I mean? <laughs> In a mask. Yeah. Well, yeah, guys, so I'm sitting here and I'm writing out the different questions I'm going to ask. And that song came on and it's like all of a sudden I wanted to yell out, it's all for you, Damien. <laughs> <From Walmart. laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it kind of like sets the tone. Like, all right, we're about to hear some, some shit. Like it's yeah. about to get pretty dark and heavy in here. And you know, it's, it's cool. Like the world's a pretty dark and heavy place. So so what would you classify yourself as the band as you said it once before uh, it, like a doom metal doom, doom metal. like yeah there's a bunch of you know obviously a bunch of different genres of metal that'd be uh considered the doom the mm-hmm. doomy side yeah there's yeah there's quite a few different genres that are starting to pop up there's another band i don't know if you've listened to them but they're called liliac no they, they call themselves vamp metal and they're actually they're just they're siblings and this huh. girl has got a friggin amazing voice a very raspy smoky voice and um they do covers they did um uh they just did um uh metallica um was the one of their big songs from earlier i can't remember it's like right on top of my tongue but it's it's how early are we talking uh second album Ride the Lightning, uh, Fade to Black. No, what isn't that one? Ah, oh, shit. Hold on. I'll go on their YouTube and uh, try to find it here. But um, they also did um, some Ronnie James Dio. And they're fa- fabulous. So you should check them out. So I will, really- absolutely. They're called Liliac. And um, I don't know. I'd probably get my ass kicked if I went on here. Man, like, yeah, anytime you see or like hear these new bands, just like send them my way, shoot me a link, like I'll check them out. I don't know. I'm gonna try. I'm on the road for hours at night, so yeah, I might well. get a, I might get a strike on this, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So I'm gonna play a little sample here of, uh, and that's great because you know you guys aren't uh, didn't have any copyright things for when I played uh, your song, so. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, you know, man, I appreciate you uh, having me on here and, 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 and playing the stuff off the album. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Right, this is this is the Holy Diver. Let me see if I can. Please, YouTube, don't strike me down. I know if we talk over top of it, it should be all right. I know we got away with that in an episode of Down in a Hole. <laughs> if I turn it down, maybe too. Actually, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to share this. I don't. You'll be able to see it if I pull it up. Uh, possibly. I know, like what whatever you pulled up before, I can see. Okay, hold on. Share screen. Shit, man! I'm so glad you know how all this stuff works. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna turn this down some so get my ass kicked. Yeah, so uh, these guys are fantastic. Make, music is bright and like the future for these guys. They're just amazing. Oh, they're, I think they're Romanian, I think. They're, they're just kids, man. Yeah. Yep. Hey, oh, the voice. That's unreal, man. I know. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That's awesome. And they did, um, they have their own, um, album out too. Behind every Tim Horton oh. smile cookie. There's is it, is it something that's available on like Spotify and Apple music and stuff too? I think so. Yeah. Buy a smile cookie, and one hundred percent of proceeds will help support local charities. And Ooh, smile cookie, cookie my man. ass. Have you seen the shape of some of them smile cookies, man? Uh, Tim Hortons just gone down. Yo. Man. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward over here. 
Yeah, this is one of the original songs. But the first time I heard them, it was actually um, someone I met in South that well, I didn't meet, but I met on Facebook. And we talked Dr. Hugh a few times. And um, she was actually the one who introduced me to the rocket scientist. Yeah. And she introduced me to these guys. Fantastic stuff. See, voice. like this, yeah, like this is the type of stuff that like should be on radio. Yes. You know, like not the shit that is on there now. Like I, yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, like that man, what a like, and they're just, yeah, they're kids, man. Like there's. Yeah. I think the oldest is 23 and that's the guitar player. Oh man. Um. Find that back. Yeah, yeah, they did enter Sandman, but that wasn't the last one that they did. Um, What is the last song that they did? Master of Puppets was it? Oh, (laughs) that's a good one, man. I freaking I saw Apocalyptica in Ottawa once. And like watching them jam out Metallica on the cellos was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Yeah. Man, one bell. I L A. Oh my God, A C. Yeah. Um. Interesting, man. Rainbow in the dark. Maybe it wasn't uh, Master of Puppets. Okay. You know, probably going to get an Oh, no. No ads. I'm fast forward to here. Your voice just does it for me, man. I'm like, yeah, man. That smoky, raspy, Bonnie Tyler esque, but this is like Bonnie Tyler's kicking your ass. Yeah, man. They got a career ahead of them. That's for damn sure. 100%. Yeah, yeah like, I don't know what it is. Like, I can't, I mean, I, I'm not a vocalist, so I don't know what the effect is called, but it's like, if you listen to like the black keys and like shit like that, they all have that same sort of like filter on the vocals. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if it's just like disguising the fact that they're like, you know, I like what, like, I I don't get it. I don't, I don't like it. It doesn't sound right to me. It's, it's not genuine. No, like the, I mean, the the human voice is a an awesome instrument and like when you're doing crap like that you're just like it's like here i'm going to give you a guitar to play but i'm only going to leave three strings on it yeah like jennifer says oh yeah that's the school of children specifically for music and they play all kinds of genres that's so. awesome and like that that's exactly and that's the kind of stuff that i wish was on. if that was what was on the radio i would listen to the radio more you know what i mean mm-hmm. like Mm-hmm. I would make an attempt to listen like I used to. Because, you, you know, you'd get hear of a band coming out with a new single and you you want to tune into the radio at 440 so you could hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then it said you have to turn on the radio and listen to friggin' Billy Ellish. For crying. Oh, yeah, yeah. And like, I... I, I Jesus. I, yeah, and I that's know. another thing that, you know, when she did the theme song... To the Noob James Bond movie. I don't even know if you've heard that song yet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And when you listen to it, and you just you put your head, you close your eyes, and you listen to it, the orchestra sounds phenomenal. Yeah, one hundred percent. But then her voice kind of starts. They should have just had Adele tell, again. Yeah, it's like she was. She wasn't in the studio. She was just did, overdubbed her voice over top of it, and it didn't work at all. Yeah, I just bring Horrible. back, a, bring back Adele from from Skyfall like that. I yeah. mean, didn't they win like a an Oscar or a Grammy or some shit like that from yeah. from that song? Yeah, like that well, was very very well done. Sadly, this problem probably will too, just because it's uh, Billy Eilish. But it was it's you know they should have just kept it as an instrumental with the orchestra. Yeah, with the theme song because wow, that the orchestra was unbelievable. Yeah, because let's face it. I mean, we all we we all pay attention to that part of the movie anyway, because the cool like visual sequence on the screen. Yeah. The only theme I didn't like from a James Bond movie was that Lulu did uh, "Man with the Golden Gun." Yeah, oh, that, that was horrible. Yeah, man, you want to know what my favorite one was? And surprisingly, no, it's not "Live and Let Die." Hmm. Golden Eye. Oh yeah, the Queen, Tina. Right, Tina Turner. Yeah, that was like that song. It just like that movie wouldn't have. I mean, it, I I love that movie, but to me, it wouldn't have been as good if that wasn't the theme song. She killed it. Absolutely killed it. Uh, mine was. Um, I'm trying to remember who the singer is. It's getting I'm getting tired, so I'm kind of trying to remember here. Um, hold on, give me a second. Uh, but, uh, James Bond. Oh my God, I can't type James Bond. Yeah, they had some man. Like it was like they had Duran Duran going on one of the in one of oh, the yeah, movies. The like was wicked. Like oh yeah, I mean there have been some decent ones. There have been some not so decent ones. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know my favorite James Bond movie, and um theme song it um uh, do, 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 do. It was all time high was the song by um what's your name Rita Coolridge from Octopussy yeah love that one great love, yeah. uh, great movie love, too uh, love Octopussy yeah it's funny enough talking about the, the man with the golden gun like oh man that was yeah. that was one of my favorites too man Christopher young Christopher Lee Scaramanga yeah. Awesome, mm -hmm. and um, what was his name? The guy that played the uh, tattoo, the plane boss, the plane. What was his name? Uh, Irv yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that was a good one. So many great movies for James Bond. I don't think that there was the only movie I really didn't care for was the um, Live and Let Die. For some reason, I just I couldn't get into that one. Great theme song, but the, the, the movie itself was. Yeah, um, yeah. I actually just watched that like maybe a month or two ago again. Uh, yeah, not one that really encapsulates me so much. But uh, there's not a rock. It says Billy Ellish's voice reminds him of a cat being forced through a cheese grinder. <laughs> 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 oh man that's classic that's classic uh, high five man oh that's great um i'm just happy there's a new bond coming yeah like I don't and know. i'm hoping they keep him as a female they, they can do 007 movies with a female she right? can't be 007 though but nine well, she be, well 007 is the license to kill but you can't that, be James Bond. Yeah, because 007 is specifically his license. Yeah. So, like, it, it can be another double O for sure. You can give it a cool name, you know, have it as part of the double O family, but, like, yeah. nowhere should 007 be anywhere near that unless they're showing, like, a gravestone or something. You know what I mean? That's not what I wanted to do. The, um, well, I didn't. They introduced 006s in Octopussy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and then and when you got to Goldeneye, 006 was uh, Sean Bean. Yep. And, and one of his deaths. 
the man who likes to die in movies, Sean Bean. Yeah, except with the exception of Troy, he doesn't die at the end of Troy. No, there was another well, movie too I saw him in, and he didn't die in that one. But it was it was an indie movie. I can't remember what it was called. I think it was on Netflix. My wife had it on, and I was bored, and I sat out there and watched it with her. It wasn't a very good movie. Oh man, like his death as Boromir was so epic. Yes. Yeah. So epic, but yeah, to me, like he'll always be, regardless of whether or not whether he's Boromir, whether he's Ned Stark, whether he's whoever, like he's always Alec Trevelyan, 006. That's I how I was watching Game of Thrones when he died. It was, I stopped watching it when they came out with that like weird, like witch birth. I did something weird happen, and I was like, this doesn't make any. <laughs> yeah there was like what did you what was her the crazy weird witch in game of thrones that made me not want to watch it anymore oh, the red woman. The red, red woman the red woman anyway yeah when this when this character came in I, that's when i tuned out i think the actress is married to one of the actors in game of thrones too oh no way well yeah it was like that when that character came in that was when i uh I I bailed. It was just, you know, I, I, there was a lot of stuff I put up with in that show. Like it was pretty decent, but that was just couldn't do it. And then I heard about how bad the final season was. No, oh, no, she's married to Guy Pierce. I yeah, I didn't watch the final season. I just, yeah, I just. I'm one of these type of people that I sometimes I won't watch something right away. I'll wait to be able to binge watch. Yeah, fair enough. And then, but I kept hearing all these bad things. <laughs> <laughs> and then even from people that I trusted, people were like, don't even bother me. Don't, don't waste your time. No, for sure. It's funny enough. Like I actually, I'm, I, I have only watched one episode of it, but I'm a huge fan of 24. Okay, yep. And I've watched like all the episodes and everything religiously, with the exception of the very final season. Just because like when it's finished, then it's over. <laughs> and I don't want to feel like it's over, so I don't want to watch the season yet. <laughs> Hypnotic Rocket says you don't watch the final season of Game of Thrones, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome! That's yeah, that's what I've been told. And I well, just you, I got, said you, you said you've been watching um, um, Coronation Street. Oh yeah, man, yeah. for a few years I've, now. I've been watching that. One of the British shows that I really, really got into was um, um, oh my god, I can't even, I can't think right now. Please tell me it's Mrs. Brown's boys. Oh, Mrs. Brown's boys was good. Oh, oh he's gone again. He's been having um, connection problems. Uh, Mrs. Brown Boys. What was um, what was the name of? So, so hey. Oh fuck, man! I realized what my issue is. It's Bell Internet. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. I think. Um, what was the name of uh, the Downtown Abbey? Oh yeah, down in Abbey. Yeah, we got it. we got into that. See, I don't, I haven't finished it all, but we watched quite a few seasons of it. Yeah, Another like, really well written British show for sure. There isn't too many shows my wife and I will sit down and watch together, but Downtown Abbey was one of them, and um, Call the Midwife was another one. Yeah, the uh, Coronation Street. Yeah, that's one man. Like, I don't know what it is about the writing, but the amount of times where. Because we, we get caught up on the CBC app, like the CBC Gem app. So, yep. you know, with kids and stuff, time gets away. So we'll end up with like a week's worth of episodes that we can binge at like the end of the week. And like, I swear to God, every time we do that, as soon as we finish the last episode, I'm like, okay, so like, where's the next one? Like, what the hell? Like cliffhangers all the time. But like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, but like and not like overused like i don't know it's just it's it's great great show and then but yeah mrs brown's what i was saying before i got cut off by bell <laughs> was i was hoping we were gonna say mrs brown's boys because man i holy crap 
yeah. one of the greatest comedies I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. Or I guess it's yeah, that's Irish. Yeah, but it is on BBC. Yeah, good old BBC. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad we don't have a program or a TV station that we have to be forced to uh, pay for. Yeah. We have the like, PBS, the TV Ontario, but at least you don't have to like, they don't tell you you have to support it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's true. Like, you know, give us your money. I don't care how old you are. <laughs> you, you're on the pension. Give us some money. Oh man. No kidding. Well, we're coming up on the two-hour mark, so I oh, think. Oh, jeez! Yeah, this guy's got to get some Z's, get some Z's before work. Yeah. So um, we'll have to do this again sometime. Yeah, man, absolutely, anytime. It's awesome being able to just sit uninterruptedly and just catch up and shoot the shit. And like, man, it just brings back old times. Yeah, it's just like old times. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to say goodbye, and I do have in the description below a the link to Godthorn um, album in Spotify, Thank and you. Uh, Thank the you. link to uh, your um, Darren in a Hole YouTube channel is in the description below as well. So, very um, much appreciated, my friend. Very much appreciated. Take out uh, John on those. All right. That's it. Take care. Adios, everybody. See you later.